So I don't think this would surprise anyone to know that around here, some people know me as the high five pastor, right? (laughs) I love giving high fives as soon as I bring my slides back up. But I love giving high fives. You know, there's just something about those high fives, when those hands just clap together, that is just amazing, right? Have you heard the term uh, or the phrase, actions speak louder than words? I think we're all familiar with it. Well, I think that act of those hands coming together communicates very loudly. I'd say a a sense of of encouragement, a sense of excitement, and maybe even a sense of friendship between the two parties who high-fived together. And since I'm talking about high fives, I figured, you know, as the high five pastor, I would start out today and share with you some of the, the different types of high fives that I have experienced around here. And uh, to show you one of them, Logan, I'm going to have you come on up here real quick. Come on up, Logan. All right. This one is known as the jump five, right? See? <laughs> Look at the excitement, Right? All right, the other one, the other one is known as the, uh, the low five, right? We've done that before, right? For all those uh, students that uh, want to kind of go against the grain and be a little bit different. And then there's the, I've experienced the, the one finger high five. You know, you know what I'm talking about, Logan? No, not yeah. really. Your sister gives it to me all the time. Yep, I get the, the one finger. <laughs> that's the high five I'd call that's, you know, I'm a little too cool for school, and so I just get one finger from our students. You go ahead and sit on back down, Logan. Thank you very much. Can you give them a round of applause? Thank you for helping me out there. <laughs> There's also the, the delayed five, and you'll probably actually see one of these a little later in our service during Noisy Offering. The delayed five is when, you know, the kids come running up here, they, they throw their coins in the noisy offering, and then they take off running back to their parents. And all the meanwhile, my hand's out there, I'm ready to give them a high five, but they run right past me, and like on, on step five, six, or eight, they realize it, and then they come running back around to give me a high five, right? That's the delayed five. And then there's the air five, right? For those long distance high fives that you want to give to somebody, or maybe, maybe it's to someone who's a little bit more germ conscious, right? Because they see all those hands that touch Pastor Shea's hand, and they're like, no, I don't know if I want to touch that hand, right? Well, full disclaimer, I do wash my hands a lot, and I do use hand sanitizer, and to prove it to you, I'll use some right now. I'll be giving free high fives after service again, so feel free. There's also the, uh, the prayer five, as I like to call it, right? You know, anytime you put your hands together, I'd say you're, it's like you're giving God a high five when we come to him in a time of prayer. Or, or sometimes there's confusion, right, on that emoji that I call prayer hands. You know, it's also known as a high five. Well, I think this settles it, right? A prayer is a high five to the Lord. Then there's the pastor five, as I like to call it, right? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's any time, you know, two pastors high five together. I mean, didn't that just sound amazing? I mean, if you listen closely, I don't know if you heard it, but there's actually, every time two pastors high five, there's an angel that sings, (laughs) right? And I don't know if that's true, but. (laughs) And then there's the the last one, the spirit five, right? And and there's two kinds of spirit five, right? Some of you, you were were joining us in the spirit five as we just sung Waymaker together, right? It's for for all those who just lift up their hand and worship to the Lord. You're giving a high five, and the Holy Spirit is giving you a high five as you praise God. So anyone, I encourage you, lift your hand up and worship as we praise the Lord. There's also the spirit five that I experience oftentimes, again, at Noisy Offering. And that's when the kids are so excited that they just run right past me, but they don't even realize I had my hand out at all, so they go all the way back to their parents. And so what I've convinced myself of is that when that happens, the Holy Spirit actually steps in, right? And he gives me a high five. You know, I don't feel it, but it's there, okay? That's the Spirit five. You know, and the reason I bring all this up is because, you know, just as I love high fives and just as I'd say that one connection of of hands coming together can create this, this excitement, can bridge gaps, and can foster this unity between two people, there's another greater 
connection that does this. And that's the connection that we have in Christ. You see, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we are blessed with so, so many things. And today, I would like to talk to you about five of those great and gracious blessings. Hence, this is called the High Five Sermon, okay? Now, the first blessing, the first blessing I want to talk to you about is faith. Everybody say faith, Faith. right? I'm not talking about comfort dog faith. I'm talking about faith in Jesus, right? Those of you joining us online, type that in the chat, faith. Now, the writer of Hebrews tells us that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I love that definition that St. Paul writes to us through the Spirit about what faith means. I love that, that as Christians, faith means that we have this conviction and this certainty in our Lord and in our Savior. The blessings, the gifts, the promises that he gives us. But I think there's another way that we can kind of talk about and understand faith. And, and I'd, I'd say, go back to that gospel reading that we heard a little earlier today from Matthew 14. Remember when Peter is out there walking on the water, who is he looking at? Jesus. So faith, in a sense, is simply looking to Jesus. And notice what happens to Peter when when the wind and the waves around him distract him and he takes his eyes off of Jesus, that's when he starts to sink. Faith means looking to Jesus and trusting in him. Because this Jesus, this Jesus is Lord. He is the Lord over the sea and the land. He is the the Lord of all creation and the Lord of life. No matter what is going on in this world, no matter what's going on in politics, no matter what's going on in our country, no matter what disasters are taking place like fires out in Hawaii, Jesus is Lord. And he is in control His plans and his timing are always perfect, which is why we can have faith and trust in him. Because truly, he is always working things out for good. So you and I can be certain. You and I can be confident and convicted, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. Faith. The second blessing I'd like to talk about is forgiveness. Right, Paul writes in his letter to the Ephesians, verse 7 of chapter 1, in him, Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You know, when Paul writes to the Romans in chapter 3, verse 23, he tells them that all of us, right, the truth is all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And what this sin has done is it has separated us. It has ruined the relationship that we have with God. Three chapters later in, verse, in chapter 6, verse 23, Paul goes on to say that the wages of our sin is death. And isn't that the price that Jesus pays for each and for every one of us, giving his life for us on the cross to pay those wages of sin. All because that is his great love for us. And speaking of love, I love how Martin Luther explains this in his second article to the Apostles' Creed. He says, he, Jesus, has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person. He has purchased and won me from all sin, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with, not with silver or gold, and not even had, not with paper or plastic, but with his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death in order that you and I may be his own and live with him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, amen? Amen. And this forgiveness that God graciously offers to us, it's a forgiveness that he offers to us again and again and again. For as it is written in 1 John chapter 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just 
to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And isn't that what just took place earlier in this very service? You and I together have come before our gracious God and we have laid bare all of our sins in that confession, no matter what they are, no matter how bad they may be. And God spoke through his servant, Pastor Dave, his forgiveness. And when those words were spoken, I forgive you. You are forgiven. All of those sins, they have been nailed to that cross. Now you are washed and you are cleansed. You are sanctified in Christ. Forgiveness. The third blessing that we have in Christ is family. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. You see, we are God's children through faith. That's a, a great blessing that God brings us together as one big, great, and blessed family. A family that is called and equipped to, to lovingly support and encourage one another, to build each other up. I think St. Paul captures this very well in his letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, specifically verses 12 through 14. He writes this, Therefore, as God's chosen ones, right? In other words, as God's children, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. And above all, above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. You see, as a, as a family gathered together, brought together in Christ, you and I lovingly support and we build each other up in this love. And what this looks like, well, it looks like a whole host of things, right? It could look like maybe a, a listening ear for somebody who's going through something. It could look like a, a shoulder to cry on for someone who's grieving the loss of a loved one. Or it could look like prayer. Whether it's prayer in person or maybe it's prayer over the phone. You know, you, you find out that a, a family member in Christ has lost someone that they loved. And so what do you do? You, you pick up the phone and you just offer, can I pray with you? And you lift them up to the Lord. Encourage them and build them up in that time of sorrow. Or it could look like hospitality. Maybe you find out one of your fellow brothers or sisters in Christ, they're really struggling, maybe even financially, to put food on the table. And so what do you do? You offer to invite them over to your house for a meal. But you don't just stop there. You, you offer to actually, I don't know, maybe buy some groceries on their behalf to support them, to build them up, because that's what family does. And you and I in Christ... Truly, we are a family, a family that loves one another, that builds each other up, and even when we sin against one another, we forgive. We forgive just as God in Christ has graciously, lovingly forgiven us. Forgive family. Number four is freedom. As Americans, who in here doesn't love the word freedom, right? St. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, he says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to take you back for a moment where that freedom began. Here at the Blessed Baptismal Font. For through this very water and the word, God not only brought you into his family, but he, he promised that his Holy Spirit would dwell within us. Or as St. Paul writes there in chapter 6 of Corinthians, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom not just from sin and from death and from the power of the devil. I'm talking about freedom even to live our life to the fullest 
to live our lives as God has designed and called and redeemed us to live, to be a reflection of Christ himself, which means that just as Jesus has come not to be served, but to serve, that's how you and I live in the freedom that we have in Christ. That freedom could look like, I don't know, waking up early on a Saturday morning and gathering at St. Stephen's Elementary School to simply spread some mulch to help beautify the campus before the start of their school year. That freedom could look like bringing in school supplies that the, our, our missions team and our LWML are doing right now to help provide school supplies for children in our community. Or, or it could be bringing those cans and other you know, par- uh, food items as part of the parade of cans that we're doing with the corner table to help those who are less fortunate, those who struggle to put food on the table for their families. Or it's freedom to faithfully fulfill the vocations that God has given to us. For example, maybe, maybe your vocation is as a, a parent or a child. And as a child, you have the, the freedom to do something without even being asked by your parents, right? Right, instead of waiting for them to say, hey, I need you to go take the garbage out, Logan, right? You're just gonna do it, right? High five if you're gonna do it. All right, you saw freedom. Freedom to honor your mother and your father. Or freedom as a parent. To bring your child here in worship. To help raise them and nurture them in the faith. Or maybe it's freedom to to, to lovingly serve your spouse. Maybe maybe you do that by, you know, simply doing an act of kindness towards your spouse without them asking about it. Or maybe maybe it's the freedom to, to show up at their bedside when they're going through some sickness or suffering in their life, and you show up every day, day in and day out, because you made a promise for better or worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. And God has equipped you, and he's called you, and he's granted you the freedom to faithfully love And stick with your spouse no matter what. Because you recognize that our marriages, our marriages are also a reflection of the marriage that God has with his bride, known as the church. Or maybe your vocation is as a teacher. And as a teacher, you serve our students with every ounce of strength and joy that you can muster because you know that your labor is not in vain. You know that what you are doing has such an impact on their lives. Not only, especially for the teachers here at St. Stephen's, not only are you raising and developing their education, you are having an important impact on their life of faith, helping raise and develop them and getting to know our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And God has given you the freedom to do that. The last one, number five, is forever. 1 John 2, verse 25 says this, This is the promise he has made, eternal life. Congregation, say that with me. Eternal life. Those of you that are joining us online, type that in the chat. Eternal life. This is the promise that God has given us, right? right? John himself writes this in another way back in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal, eternal life. And this eternal life that God promises, it makes all the difference for us in this life now. You see, this promise encourages and strengthens us, even in the midst of the sicknesses and the sufferings that we experience in life, because we know that there is a future that God has planned for us, a forever that God has promised for you and for me and for all who believe in Jesus. This eternal life means that there is an end to the suffering and the sickness. It means that there is a final healing that is promised to us all. 
It means that there is a happy reunion that's promised, whether in heaven or through the resurrection. This is the promise God has made, eternal life for you, for me, and for all who believe in Jesus Christ. And this hope and promise that we have, truly, it makes all the difference in life. It comforts us and it even gives us joy in the midst of the suffering and the sorrow and even the longing and loss of loved ones. You see, brothers and sisters in Christ, connected to Christ, these are five great and gracious blessings that we have in him. Congregation, I want you to say all five of them with me. Faith, forgiveness, family, freedom, forever. These are God's great and gracious gifts. And as you leave here today, I want you to remember all five of them. Anytime you you reach out to extend a high five or receive a high five, by the way, I'll be giving out free high fives in the back after service. Anytime, remember these great and gracious gifts that we have in Jesus and in Jesus alone. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ, which truly surpasses all understanding, continue to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from now until that life everlasting. Amen.